guys I'm Miss Lori and welcome to my pantry it's jarred up January and today I'm bringing you winter squash soup. Y'all hang around. Be 11 great channels canning up something really wonderful for you every day in January. And I'll have the playlist down below in my description box. Okay, I'm working on getting the, the peeling off the butternut squash. And anybody that's ever worked with butternut squash knows that it's not the easiest thing to peel. But Danny got this peeler for me. Uh, it wasn't at a store. He got it at a outdoorsman convention in one of our big towns next to us. Uh, they had a booth set up selling them, and this thing does the job now. So it's really a good peeler, but it, <clears throat> it gets down in there pretty deep and does the job. Now, they also will, in the produce section, they have butternut squash already cubed up in a bag. So, you know, that may be what some of you have to do. Some of you may not be able to, to grasp, you know, a peeler and uh, get down in there. Because I try to get that white pith off too, as much as I can. Without getting too deep. So you can either, of course, these were grown in the garden, and these things have lasted up. Uh, I had some that lasted a year in my pantry. I just put them in a dark place, and uh, they do. Butternut squash will last a long time in a dark, dry, cool, decently cool place. But I'm just wanting to get all that peeling off. Like I said, you can buy it already cubed up. My chickens are going to be very happy for all these peelings. Now, if I don't, I need about six cups of cubed butternut squash. And if I don't end up with exactly six cups, I've got pumpkin still in there. I've got acorn squash. Um, some different squashes in there that I can make up the difference. I'm hoping that this will make six cups cubed up. We'll see. But anyway, there we go. Got it done. Now we're going to slice them lengthways and I'm going to start to cubing them up and see how many cups I've got. Okay guys, I got them cut in half. Now we're de-seeding them. Just want to get as much of the little stringy things out that you can. If you don't get them all out, that's okay. But you just take your a spoon and, and I'm going to keep most of these seeds, a lot of them. And see if I can get them to sprout for next year's or this year's <laughs> this year's garden. So just get as much of that out as you can. And it's funny how this the younger, the smaller butternut squash is a lot more brighter orange than the, the bigger one. So myself, I don't really like them getting too big. I think they're better when they're younger and smaller. I'm that way with my yellow squash and my zucchini too. I think they taste better and, and do better when they're just a little bit younger. So we're going to get all the seeds out. And then we're going to cube it up and get it ready to 
to cook up and pan it, it's going to really be good. If you've never planted butternut squash, it's really a, a easy, hearty squash to, to grow. To me, they're so much easier than even pumpkins. Pumpkins, uh, I don't know here where I live, it's, you have to really baby the pumpkins, it seems like. So let me get the rest of this done, and uh, then we'll carry on with the, with the rest. Okay, we got our butternut squash cut up, and that one big squash and the two little ones made uh, about eight cups. Now, you may want to cut your cubes smaller. Most of these are one inch. You may want to do it half an inch, but either way, it's going to cook up. So, I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough, but I did. So, it worked out good. So, now we're going to cut up our leeks. And the first thing we have to do is we got to wash them real good. Okay, now we're going to work on our leeks. <clears throat> and these come from the store. They're not out of the garden. But regardless where you get them, they're going to be very dirty and full of sand and dirt. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to cut off really and truly. I just want to the light green parts all right now. So what I'm going to do is I cut off the ends. You see where it's light green and starts getting darker green. I want all this. But I'm going to cut them in half. And I want about two cups of leeks. And I'm going to put them and clean them off. Let me cut this other one. I'll show you. They smell really good. Now leeks aren't as harsh as your onions. they got more of a licorice taste to them. I get my water. So what you want to do is just kind of separate like this because that's where a lot of your dirt is. And I know they try to wash them a little bit in the uh, store, but they don't get them good enough. Now I grew leeks, and I'm gonna try growing them this year, but, and I don't know if it's just Arkansas, but it took me two years to get my leeks up pretty good size. They went through the winter. I planted them. They didn't get very big. They went through the winter here, and uh, you can just leave them in a bowl of water and just let them soak a while, too, and a lot of that dirt will come out. But they went through the winter, and uh, then that next, oh, probably August or September, they were really big. So it, I don't, I'm not for sure how long it takes. I'm, I haven't researched about leeks much to get really big leeks, but it, it took two years here. I need to do more research on them. Because I really like them in soaps and stuff. They give stuff like that a really good taste. So anyway, you get the gist of it. Like I said, if you want, you can see the dirt down there in the bottom. If you want to, just leave them in your water for a while and let them soak. And then rinse them good. So I'm going to take them under the sink water, the faucet, and uh, do a little bit more cleaning on them. And then we're going to get them cut up. Okay, let's get our leeks cut up, and we need two cups. So you can just take two like this, and uh, you don't have to cut them up too little, but you want them kind of fine. The leeks really have a kind of a onion, but not stout onion uh, smell to them. They smell so good, and they just make your soups and your your entrees and your just so many things just have such a, a good taste 
and it just smells really earthy to me. I'm gonna throw that green part out because that's where it starts getting kind of stout. I'm just gonna chop them up just a little bit because they're gonna cook down. Don't have to be perfect. Get that one out of there. Now we're also going to be putting in, which I know y'all might think is kind of strange, but we're going to be putting in um, a couple of Granny Smith apples. This recipe, when I first seen it, it just caught my eye, and I've I've got a lot of uh, squash soup recipes and this one with that granny smith apple it um it gives that soup such a wonderful maybe just a little more granny smiths aren't real sweet but it just gives it this taste that maybe a little bit of tartness too but sometimes it's really good to go outside your box and, uh, you know, explore new foods. I'm a foodie. I've been a foodie since I was a young girl when I started collecting cookbooks and uh, watching cooking shows. And I don't, I do a lot of research on, on different uh, cuisines and, and stuff like that. I mean, Danny and I don't just eat a bunch of old <laughs> fried up southern food like people think we do. We eat a lot of different stuff. We eat a lot more healthier than probably what we put on YouTube. <laughs> um, so, but that's about good there. So that was two leeks. Well, my chickens are going to be happy today. So we got the leeks and the butternut scores cut up. Not too bad. We also need a, a half a cup of chopped carrots. That's where you're going to get a little sweetness from too. And then our chopped celery and our Granny Smith apples. So it's really getting to look good and looking healthy already so we'll be back okay let's get to washing our jars now my recipe calls for six pints but i'm going to put them in half pints because that's the right size for me i can open this up and warm it up and have a wonderful soup and a salad for my supper or I can take it to work with me and warm it up for lunch so for me this is a perfect size so I took out 12 of the half pints we'll see you, you know you never know so what you want to do though you want to check your your jars regardless what you're canning anything and just rub your finger over the top like this and make sure that there's no nicks or cracks or anything on there that will keep it from sealing and then you just want to kind of turn it over in the light and just kind of look and make sure there's no cracks in your jars so all of mine look good so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to wash them real good and then i'm going to put them in the in my canner and let them be getting hot because you want your jars hot and you want your soup hot and as far as your lids you want them warm you don't have to get them boiling hot and uh, we'll be ready get this stuff canned up
Okay, let's get this beautiful squash soup started. The first thing you want to do is put your five tablespoons of butter in. I've got my stainless steel uh, stock pot here. So five tablespoons of butter. And we're going to add our carrots and our celery. And I got it on about medium low heat because what I want to do is I just want to saute my vegetables. I got my two cups of leeks. You can imagine how good it's going to smell in here. And I've got my six cups of uh, squash. Now, the apples come in later. You don't want to saute your apples. So, all I'm going to do is saute these for about 10 minutes. Just let them get some of their uh, the flavors and the juices kind of out. Just let them marry together a little bit. It smells wonderful. And you know, there's nothing, everything in this soup is so healthy and, and just so good for you. So I'm going to let them saute for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and uh, we'll put the rest of the ingredients in and it'll be about that easy. Okay, guys, look at the beautiful color in that pot. It just looks good and looks healthy. But now we're to our second stage, and uh, this sauteed for about 10 to 12 minutes. I didn't really time it, and uh, it sauteed up really good, and it's got the house just smelling wonderful. So now we're going to add the five cups of chicken stock. And we're going to add a cup of apple cider. I was fixing to say apple cider vinegar and that's not what I meant. It's apple cider. One cup. <clears throat> you have to watch me. I'm going to stir that just a minute. So we got five cups of chicken stock and a cup of apple cider. And now we're going to put our two Granny Smith apples in. Now, if you don't have Granny Smith and you have already uh, maybe in your, your pantry or down in the basement or something, you've got a bunch of apples that are down there and still good, use whatever you've got. Stir that up a little bit. Now, I'm going to put my seasonings in here. I'm going to put a teaspoon of thyme, a half a teaspoon of sage, and a teaspoon of salt. Now, <clears throat> I like sage, but I don't like it to overpower whatever I'm cooking. It's even that way with my dressing, so... The recipe calls for a teaspoon. I always, you know, just put about a half. And to me, I'd rather put less and then taste it as I go. Because some, you know, some spices can kind of overwhelm what you're cooking. So we're going to put our seasonings in there. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. And once it comes up to a boil, I'm going to put it on simmer, and we're going to simmer it for about 30 minutes or until everything gets good and tender. Because when it does, we're going to get our hand blender out, or you can use uh, just a regular blender, and we're going to puree our soup. So we'll be back. Okay, it's come to a, a good boil. I'm going to turn the heat down to simmer and put a lid on it. I'm going to let it simmer for about 30 minutes. Hi guys, look how beautiful this, it cooked up 
really, really well in 30 minutes. Everything's good and tender and looking really good. So I'm going to use my hand, uh, my hand blender, immersion blender, and I'm going to puree this. Now, if you don't have one, you can use your regular blender. Just do a cup to maybe two cups at a time. Be careful because your soup, remember, is really hot. And you want to puree it till it's good and smooth. Okay, I got it blended up. I took my time with it to make sure that I got all the celery and, and the apples and everything blended up good. And I even, I thought I had it pretty smooth and I stirred it and I had a couple of little squashes that weren't uh, pureed very good. So I just took my time with it. And I also tasted it. And it's, I can't tell y'all, it's, it's wonderful. But anyways... Let's get, okay, let's get our soup jarred up. My jars are hot. My lids are warm. I've got a little bit of vinegar here to wipe off the lids. And my pressure canner is over here with the, the right amount of hot water. And I've got it on low until I get my jars in there. Let me get me a paper towel. And we'll start ladling this up. It's going to be so pretty in these jars, too. This would be a good gift. And like I said, I'm just... You can put it in pints. And it would make six pints. That's what the recipe is supposed to make. You ever done a recipe and went to can it up and... <laughs> It didn't make as much as it, whoops, there's one there. It didn't make as much as the recipe said it would. I've done that before and got really disappointed, but maybe I've done something wrong. Who knows? I'm going to leave an inch head space. If you got little bits of carrots or whatever in there, it's not going to hurt nothing. But this is to be a, a good creamy soup. be so good to come in on a very cold day and just open your jar up. Put just a little bit more in here. It's like just a little bit. But I'm going to fill my jars up and uh, we'll be back to follow up on the rest of it. Hey guys, I'm actually going to get 12 half pints, and I'm just taking, I done got most of them in my canner, and I'm taking vinegar on my paper towel, making sure the top is really clean and around the, the rim, so that everything seals good. So... I got 12 half pints and I've got enough left in here for me to have for lunch. So I'm excited. So I'm going to get the lids on these two. Finger tight. Jars are hot. But I'm going to pick it up. I don't know how good you can see that. Let me see if I can do this. It's really a pretty color. So I'm going to get all these in here. And I have to confess, too, that I've got soup left over. If, and I'll put the link down below. I made some uh, peas and cabbage. For the first of January and I had a bunch left over so I got them in my Dutch oven got them really hot I've got some more jars heating up and uh, I want to get a canner full so I'll be canning my squash soup and be canning up some leftover 
peas and cabbage at the same time. That way I'll have a counter full. So, I got them all in there. Okay, we got the lid on. We're going to let pressure build up. Steam starts coming out. And uh, we'll let it steam for about 10 minutes. And then uh, we'll come back and let the pressure get up to about 10, 10 to 11 pounds. Okay, steam is coming out pretty steady, so we're going to put the timer on for 10 minutes. Okay, you know, a lot of people put a little bit, when they heat their, uh, like squash soup or a tomato bisque, sometimes they'll put a little bit of the cream in it when they heat it up. And you don't want to put the cream in before you can it. Put it in when you're heating it up. But I'm going to do something a little bit different with this squash soup. I'm going to make a cider cream. And what I've got in here is about three-fourths cup of my apple cider. And you can do this in a saucepan, but I'm just going to put this in the microwave and I'm going to heat it up real good. Okay, 10 minutes is up. We're going to put our weight on here. And uh, I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. And uh, our little popper will pop up. And then we'll get this up to about 10 to 11 pounds of pressure. And we're going to can it for 75 minutes. Okay, let's make our cider cream sauce for our squash soup. I know that sounds a little foo-foo, but <laughs> I think it's going to be good. So my apple cider vinegar, I put it in there for about five minutes and it reduced down to about half a cup. So it went from three-fourths to a half, which is good. Now we're going to put a good half a cup of sour cream in here with our apple cider. And you know, anything with sour cream is going to be so good. Okay, let me get a whisk, and we'll whisk this up real good. Okay, 75 minutes. I let it, the pressure come down, took off the lid, and here they are. They're so pretty. Okay, while well, our pressure canner's coming up to pressure, I kept me back a, a pint, because I'm going to eat some for lunch. And, uh... Here is our apple cider and sour cream. Uh, well, it's called cider cream is what it's called. And it takes the place of cream, you know, just regular cream. And uh, I put just a little bit more sour cream in it to make it a little bit thicker, but that's just up to you. And I'm going to put me a little bit in my soup. Just kind of swirl it around in there like that. And I'm out of apples, but I've got some Bosch pears, so I'm going to put me some pears on top for a little bit of sweetness. I love these pears. I'm a pear eater. I love them. And you can even put some uh, crumbled bacon. would be delicious. Uh, cr some small croutons. Anything like that is going to be delicious with this. So, and you can even see some of the thyme. So I'm going to taste it. I'm going to get me some pears and some cream. That is so good. And it, I mean, I know it's winter time, but this is, reminds me of autumn. With the pears and the squash. The apple cider. This is going to be so good to come in when I don't feel like really cooking. A whole lot and open up a, a jar make me a salad and uh, I'm good to go yeah that's a good one I hope y'all like this recipe I mean I love it and I think y'all gonna love it too if you love squash soup and if you don't love squash soup you never know this might change your mind so if you like this recipe and you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Like I said, I'll make sure that I put the rest of the channels 
down below in the description box. There's 11 of us. Every day in January, jar it up January, one of us will be canning up something wonderful. So make sure y'all watch out for it. Subscribe to their channels and watch it. And you're going to learn a lot. And learn a lot of new recipes. So God bless everybody. Me and Mr. Brown love you. And uh, y'all have a wonderful week.